Welcome to the Swine Nutrition Black Belt Podcast, the latest swine nutrition research digested for you. My name is Clayton Chastain, your host for today's episode. Today we have with us Dr. Tan Columbus, a swine nutrition research scientist at Prairie Swine Research Center. How are you doing today, Dr. Columbus? I'm good, thanks. So Dan, I was reading these two studies that your company did on functional amino acids. Would you mind walking us through those? Uh, sure. Uh, the, so we've done two studies uh, recently, the, and these are related to our work with functional amino acids or the roles of uh, some certain amino acids in health and disease uh, in pigs. Uh, we've shown in the past that uh, supplying methionine, threonine, and tryptophan to pigs during disease challenge can improve growth. So we wanted to look at some of the other factors that might uh, influence how these functional amino acids work. Uh, the first study, we wanted to examine the effect of birth weight and particular low birth weight pigs um, on functional amino acid use. So in that study, we identified pigs at either or at birth um, as either low birth weight or normal birth weight, being about 1 and 1.5 kilos respectively. Um, then at weaning, we placed them onto the experimental diets, either a basal uh, diet or one that contained methionine, threonine, and tryptophan at 120% of requirements for four weeks. Uh, then we uh, placed them all onto a common grower diet, and one week later we challenged them with salmonella uh, and followed them for a week just to see how they do. So we're also looking at whether or not uh, these amino acids can um, have an effect after they've been removed from the diet, which is something we hadn't done before either. Uh, what we found uh, was that the low birth weight pigs had an increased temperature throughout the entire study, regardless of salmonella, and this was maintained afterwards. So maybe an indication that there might be some inflammation already happening uh, in those pigs. Um, and they seem to be more susceptible to the salmonella challenge as well. Uh, and overall, functional amino acids uh, did not work in the low birth weight pigs for uh, improving growth. Um, or or in, in reducing that effect of salmonella, whereas they did have uh, uh, the expected effect in uh, normal birth weight pigs. So uh, normal birth weight that had uh, the functional amino acids, they grew more, they had uh, reduced shedding, they had uh, in, um, improved fecal score uh, throughout. Um, there was some benefit to the functional amino acids in the low birth weight. I should uh, specify that, just not with growth. Uh, so we did see some indication that they might um, have an improved gut health um, in, in with the functional amino acids, um, and and maybe in some situations a reduced acute phase response, but overall their response was uh, greater um, than with no more birth weight. So, uh, and unfortunately, it looks like the the low birth weight pigs might be uh, out of luck, <laughs> uh, as they are in most cases. Um, but uh, we do see that carryover effect of the functional amino acids and, and that benefit in normal birth weight. Uh, the second study we did, we wanted to look at protein source. Uh, and this is specifically um, plant-based versus animal-based nursery diets. And this came from a study that was done probably about 10 years ago now, um, looking at um, plant source or, or protein source in, in the nursery diet and long-term uh, growth. And in, in that previous study, the, they didn't see any effect on, on growth to market and they think, okay, plant-based are fine. Um, but they had an, un, or an unwanted disease challenge go through that. And there was some indication that plant-based might, might have been detrimental to the pig's overall health. So in, in this study, we took pigs at weaning. Uh, we gave, put them on a diet that contained all uh, plant-based uh, ingredients or the more traditional a diet where we would have included whey, fish meal, blood plasma, uh, uh, and and wheat, meat and bone meal uh, in those diets as, as an animal-based source. Uh, again, we fed that for four weeks, and then we switched them to a common grower diet. Uh, and after a week, we challenged them with salmonella and followed them a week again. So again, we're looking at that um, carryover effect almost, because these amino acids were not um, given uh, past and obviously the animal-based. And we did do the, the same with or without that functional amino acid profile that we used in the other study. And for this one, what we found was the plant-based uh, pigs or got pigs that had received the plant-based diets um, had reduced fecal score uh, and it increased uh, salmonella shedding. Um, and they also had uh, a, a 
greater response to the summer knowledge challenge to what we saw with the animal-based diet. So those pigs that received animal-based proteins had improved growth um, and reduced shedding uh, and and a reduced acute phase response um, in that subsequent challenge than the plant-based fed pigs uh, received. Um, the functional amino acids, kind of to our surprise, uh, somewhat mitigated that response in the plant-based uh, pigs. So if you added the, the functional amino acids, they did slightly better um, than just the plant alone, uh, but they did not have any benefit in the animal-based uh, fed pigs. So if you feed the animal-based nursery diets, it looks like they're doing the job uh, in, in improving the robustness of the pig and, and their ability to handle subsequent disease. But um, so just uh, a couple tools that are, are potentially out there that could be used to, to help uh, improve pig health and uh, in response to disease challenge. So one question is I had, why do you think the additional functional amino acids didn't help the low birth weight pigs as much? We know that they have an increased susceptibility to infection. Do you think it was because of that? Or do you think it was just too much of a hurdle to overcome or they're just like too far gone at this point? What's your take on that? Uh, I think there's, there's a couple of theories that we have related to that. One is that they did seem to have a already higher response just to um, inflammation or some kind of stress already. So they might not be uh, supportive in that or enough to support the increased response that they're already showing. Uh, another theory we have is that we've shown in the past and other groups have shown in the past that low birth weight pigs don't respond to nutrient signals and, 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 the, and metabolism the same way uh, as a normal birth weight pig does. So um, for instance, you know, responding to leucine and muscle protein synthesis, they don't do that the same way that a normal birth weight pig does. So um, we, we think it's probably related to both of those or even a, another factor that uh, we're not unaware of at this point. Gotcha. Um, and then the other question is, so in terms of applicability to the commercial level, um, would you say increasing those functional amino acids when challenged with S-typhimurium could be economically beneficial to the industry? I think that's going to be based on the the economics of the feed at the time and how much these ingredients are going to cost um, in order to implement um, and also related to what is the impact of that disease or, or another enteric pathogen or something in, in the, the that particular facility, um, right? It's also going to be related, especially when we talk about uh, protein sources in the nursery diet, um, what is the impact of having... Uh, a race without antibiotics, which generally includes no animal proteins in the diets as well. What is that uh, having an impact on your bottom line uh, and whether or not it makes economic sense to bring that in um, is all going to be, I think, very specific to the facilities. But we have shown that it can have a benefit um, if, if this is something that you're struggling with. Gotcha. Well, I think that wraps up our time that we have here. So thank you for coming on the show, Dan. And to everyone else, thank you for listening to the Swine Nutrition Black Belt Podcast. Please visit us at swinenutritionblackbelt.com. And don't forget to subscribe to our podcast channel so you won't miss out on the latest episode. See you next week. Hey, everyone. We're always searching for the latest and greatest research to share each week. If you have a swine nutrition related research trial and would like to come on the show to talk about it and share with us, Feel free to send an email to nutritionblackbelt at swineit.com and we would love to take a look at your research. Oh.